Goddess Kitchen. I got a good one for you today. I'm going to do a new take on meatloaf for you, okay? So I'm going to do three meats. Now this is ground pork, this is ground turkey, and this is ground beef, okay? And so I'm going to make it easy and fun for you. What we're going to do, this is a cup of bread, bread crumbs. This is a cup of water. This is a half a cup of tomato paste, tomato ketchup. I'm sorry, but you can use tomato paste also if you want to. This is three eggs. And, and to make it simple and fast and easy, you just get the Lip, Lipton soup, okay? You, it, it's, you know, it's very easy, and that way you don't have to use onions and celery and all that because it's in the lips and soup, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're going to, I'm going to put on my oven for 350 degrees, I'm gonna start it, okay? Preheat my oven, and then the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the meat together. We're gonna mix all this together, okay? easiest ways to mix it is is with your hand okay I have spatulas here but the easiest way to mix it is with your hand so but so I'm just gonna just I'm gonna put everything in it you put all this in it so since it's three pounds it's one pound of each meat so it's that's three pounds of meat I'm going to put the whole two packages if it was just two pounds you would just put one package okay but since we have Three pounds. It's one pound each. Okay. All right. So this is one cup. This, this, these are bread, bread crumbs. Okay. All right. And this is water. One cup of water. So mix it all together. Okay. And then we're going to put the ketchup. This is one cup, cup of ketchup. This is a half a cup, I'm sorry. A half a cup of ketchup, okay? And then we're going to put our eggs in. Okay. Now we're going to just mix it up. Just mix it real good. Don't be afraid of your meat. Don't be afraid to mix it. Mix it real good. Because you can always wash your hands. Or if you want to, you can use... Disposable gloves. Sometimes I do that too. The best way to mix it is with your hand. Okay. All right. Let me get all the ingredients in there. You don't have to worry about it's not being mixed in because you're mixing it with your hands, and you got to you got all of it mixed in. See how it's all mixed in? I was able to get it all mixed in. And this is the. This is the um, the container I'm going to use to um, cook it in, okay? So we're going to make a meatloaf. We're going to make a loaf, okay? We're going to make it into a loaf, and we're going to cook it for one hour at 350 degrees, and we're going to cook it uncovered, okay? This one is going to be a bigger one. pan to make it because you just make a you go you're gonna make the you're gonna make the meatloaf you're gonna make it you're gonna make the loaf itself you know the other one the, the meatloaf pan is easier because it's it's made like a loaf but this will work just as fine okay all right and when we take it out of the oven we're going to let it cook stand for at least 20 minutes before we slice it. We're not gonna slice it right away. We're gonna let it stand, it. okay? Okay, now the reason why we use the pork, ground pork is because it's gonna keep it juicy and it's not gonna be dry. It's, it's not gonna be dry, you know, it's gonna be very juicy. The, the pork is gonna make it nice and juicy, okay? There you have it. You see that? Now how easy was that? It's very easy, okay? So I'll be back in an hour and I'll show you what it looks like. 
Welcome to Grandma Daz's Tea Time. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you tuning in. And with great love and respect, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Today we're going to start a series about how to build your faith. And you don't want to miss it. We got about three series on it. So we're going to start today with the first series. How to build your faith. Are you falling short of your faith and not receiving what you're believing for? Are you praying and not seeing results, in other words? By learning how to develop possibility faith, you'll find that turning impossibilities into possibilities isn't as hard as you think. Okay, in the 1920s, Joseph Strauss dreamed of constructing a bridge that would span the Golden Gate Strait, okay? The narrow, turbulent channel were the Pacific Ocean and the San Francisco Bay. His skeptics, his peers, believed that such a bridge could never be built. And that's me, you and I, we listen to our critics and listen to our skeptics and listen to people that say we, it can't be done. But listen, um, they believe that engineering such a bridge would cost astronomical amount of money so much construction that it could never be done. Okay? They talked him into not even, they thought he was crazy thinking about doing something like that. Okay? And so um, they said that it would be enormous bridge. How could we even obtain such a thing like that? How could we even do something like that? Do you know how much money it would cost? It was, it's, it, it's absolutely impossible. And so, but the opinion of people, remember this, uh, made it so instru uh, insurmountable and the cost so vast that they uh, wanted him to stop thinking that way. But 16 years later, they, the bridge, he, he, uh, after he, he went on and he didn't listen to his skeptics, and he presented it to the uh, San Francisco City Engineering, and 16 years later, the Golden Gate Bridge finally opened to traffic. So what I'm saying to you is, don't put a limit on God like most people do. You and I put limits on God. Take the limits off of God like uh, Joseph Scrouch did. Take the limits off God and don't listen to people and believe in your heart. If, if the dream is put there, it's put there by God anyway. So if the dream is there, uh, keep it alive by not listening to people. Amen? Okay? So John Strouch had what I call possibility faith. You see, we have to have, we have to change our thinking to possibility faith. You may ask me, well, Grandma Dorothy, what is that? I'm glad you asked. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about your faith and my faith and our faith. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um... You, you might you say, well, what is that? Okay. Uh, possibility faith knows beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay. Beyond a shadow of a doubt that any adversity can be overcome and any dream can be achieved. Possibility faith is based on the following scriptures. Okay. And I'm going to give you the scriptures. Remember, I'm not going to read scriptures to you. I'm going to give them to you, but I'm not going to read them. That's your homework. Because if we want to see our faith grow, or if we want to see make achievements with God, 
We're going to have to uh, put some work into it. We can't be lazy. We can't expect uh, to achieve what we don't put any work into at all. We don't, we don't uh, apply any faith to it, okay? So I want you to write down these scriptures, Luke 1, 37, okay? And Luke 18, 27, all right? I got a few more for you later on, but right now, this is, these are the two I want you to write down. Possibility faith is a faith that believes in your heart. Remember this. It believes in your heart, and it says with your mouth, and receive what you believe in your heart. If you, 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 well, in other words, if you believe it, you speak it. In other words, you talk it all the time. You, you, don't, you don't let it lie dormant. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe it can be done. If you can, you can, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it with God on your side. With, with God, nothing is impossible, okay? So uh, remember, you're gonna, if you believe it, you're going to say it. Okay, as you say it, as you keep saying it, and keep seeing it in your mind, you will be able to, after a while, it will come to, and, and listen, it took John Shroud, uh 16 years. So, you know, me and you, we want it after we get through praying. A lot of things don't work that way. It takes time. Okay, all right. So, uh, I want you to read Romans 10, 9, and 10 also. Put that down. R write it down. Romans 10, 9, and 10. It's your homework, okay? You may be thinking, well, Grandma Dothan, that's easy for you to say, but my faith isn't as strong as yours. Listen, let me tell you something. Everybody has a measure of faith. God has given all of us. Let me show you how you can turn what may seem like an impossibility or impossible situation in, uh, around and not be as difficult as you think. I want you to uh, write down also Mark eleven twenty two. In other words, have the God kind of faith. It's not my it's, it's not my ability, but God put it there, and I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I don't believe people. I believe God. If I can see, it, if I can uh, uh, write out the, the the plan for it. God can make it happen. And that's what I believe. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And that's what you got to believe also. Remember, if you've been born again, now, now remember this. If you've been born again, Jesus said, I didn't say it, Jesus said, you must be, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And so if you've been born again, uh, you are a child of God. Remember that. I, and I want everybody to start saying, I'm a child of God. Stop saying, I'm a Christian. I belong to so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so denomination. Most people have more faith in their denomination than they do in God. But God comes first. Remember that. I'm not knocking your denomination, but God is number one. So, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I don't care what your denomination is saying. I'm not against it. I'm not being uh, against people having a denomination. But I'm against people putting... God second and the nomination first. God got to be first. I'm a child of God, okay? And so, so if you're born again, you're a child of God, okay? You have become a member of God's family. You, you become a member of God's family. You're in the family of God. And can't nobody take it away from you. Can't nobody. Only you can uh, 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 cause it to not to grow or, or cause it not to develop. It's yours. Because if you believe it, you'll say it. You'll, you'll start saying, I'm a child of God. And that's what we want to do, start doing. I'm a child of God. Okay? All right? Uh, um, through the redemptive power and the work of Jesus Christ, that, that, the, the work that he completed on the cross for me and you to become Children of God. It's, it's nothing that we have done. It's not our goodness. You can't buy it. Your money can't buy it. Uh, your education can't do it. It's all a free gift for everybody because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. That's why you're a child of God once you become born again. You know, nobody, nobody paid for it. Nobody 
Earn, you can't earn it. It's a free gift, okay? And it's for everybody. It's for everybody. You are a joint heir with Christ. And I want you to read that in Romans 8, 17. It's, it's a free gift. It's your thinking. If you change your thinking, you change your world. And that's what we have to do is discipline ourselves to start changing our thinking. And st if we think it, we'll say it. And we start saying it and saying it and saying it until it get down in our spirit. I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Amen? Um, and I also want you to look at uh, Romans 1. I'm sorry, Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. God has dealt every man or woman the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Now, the reason why some people have more faith than we have is because they have took that seed that God has given them, the measure of faith after they've been born again. They have made it grow. It has grown to uh, astronomical sizes. So they have great faith. So you see, it, it, you have the same opportunity. Nobody have more hours in a day than you. Nobody have more minutes in a day than you. You have the same ability to do what other people do, but do you want to do it? How, how bad do you want it? Do you want to apply the work that it takes to do? It takes, it takes work when you, I'm saying, reading your word and praying, spending time with your father. That's all. That's all they. That's what happened to them. That you see with, the, with these great men of faith. That's all that happened to them. You can do the same thing. It's available to all of us. Amen. All right. So, just as you have to eat every day to develop your strength, or your uh, the same thing happens with your faith. Prayer and reading the word. Helps to develop your faith. And that's what you got to do. It's a daily thing. It's a, you can't do it um, once a month, once a year. It's a, it has to be practiced every day. Jesus said, if any man want to come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. That do not mean you're going to have to be going through a whole lot of trials and tribulations. That means get yourself out of the way and let God be first in your life. Amen. Thank you so much. For tuning in for with Grandma Doc, and we'll continue this journey of faith, how to build your faith next time. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. So you see, our meatloaf has cooked for one hour and it's hot. So what we need to do is let it cool for about 20 minutes so it won't crumble apart, so it'll be nice and and and, 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 and and we can take it from this dish and put it in another on another dish or we can serve it from this dish because see this is a nice dish it's cut glass and I just put a little bit of parsley around it so that it can look nice and I like to get uh, these uh, these I get these from the uh, 99 cent store they're a dollar and so you know you can slice it real good and then you have the big peep, you know you can slice it and you can pick it up and it won't fall apart, okay? But make sure you let it cool. Let it set. Don't try to take it out of the oven and then slice it right away. Don't do that. It's big. If it's a small one, let it rest for 10 minutes, okay? All right, depends on the size of the meatloaf, all right? Okay? It's delicious. And I won't uh, slice it and, and try it right now because I need to let it rest. Uh, I have a cookbook called Dothas Mississippi Soul Food. And if you order one, everybody that orders one will get a free gift from me. And also I autograph it. Okay? And the link is on the is on my channel. And everybody that order uh, that gets one, they will not only get an autographed copy, but they're gonna get a gift from me. Alright? Okay? Happy eating to you!